welcome, Martin. Thanks for making time. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure. I, I mean, look, it's a, for me, just to be able to talk to other people who care about online safety as much as I do, uh, you know, I take every opportunity. So it's really a pleasure to be here. Yeah, so uh, we, we will talk about what you're doing right now, but I would like to go a little little back about, you know, um, how did how did all of this start? And I mean, like, literally the beginning. And this could be caring about other people when I don't know you were you were playing cricket back in the backyard or how did the how did you come to online safety? Yeah, well, the first thing I should admit is that I, I was actually pretty terrible at backyard cricket. So, uh, you know, I, I was the the last one to be picked to bowl even even in the backyard. So uh, that that was my uh, that was my cricket experience really. Um, look, when I, I mean, it's going a long way back now because I'm, I'm getting pretty old. Uh, but you know, when I was a, when I was a kid, I lived in a, this place north of Auckland here in New Zealand, and it was such an idyllic lifestyle. You know, we lived by the beach, and we went sailing, and we you know we played cricket at the park, and we did we did all those things. And it was like all the the kind of serious issues of the world. Uh, you know, they did, they just didn't reach us, and um, and so I suppose by the time I, I got to university and and uh, I was quite naive about the world and about all the complexity and problems that people face. And only as I did my degree, I did a degree in in politics and uh, in foreign affairs. Uh, as I did that degree, I sort of started to discover that the world was actually a pretty complicated, difficult place to navigate. Uh, but one of the things I was always interested in as a kid and and through university was computers. And and uh, I was very really lucky in the in the eighties um, to get my hands on some of the early sort of home computers and learn to code and things like that. And, got really interested in, in computing. And when I came out of university uh, with, with, a, with a Bachelor of Arts in politics, which, you know, it's not a degree you can directly apply to anything, I don't think, uh, I I then got a job in the tech industry, a local tech industry here in New Zealand. And but mostly, really, I was in sales and marketing jobs. It wasn't highly technical jobs at all. And I stayed in that for, for quite a long time. But towards the end of my time uh, in the tech industry, I, I was put in charge of this unit that looked after schools, looked after tech, you know, services for schools. We did, we did pretty much everything a school could want from a computer. We would provide them that service. And what I really felt and enjoyed in that part, in that work was uh, that kind of social um, enterprise thing where, yeah, we, we were making money. The company I worked for was making money, but the services we were, we were providing were, were making life a lot better for those educators that bought them. And so I sort of started to um, see the, the ability, I guess, to operate in a business way, but but do some good, uh, and I, you know, I enjoyed, I enjoyed both the technical side. I enjoyed working in that education sector, and then uh, it was really kind of happenstance. I saw the NetSafe job advertised, the NetSafe CEO's job. So NetSafe was formed in 1998 by a small community of people who knew that there was kind of trouble coming <laughs> with the internet, uh, and um, and so they, you know, they really quite ahead of their time. They got together, and there was representatives for, at the time from the uh, police here in New Zealand, to law enforcement, uh, from education sector, from uh, um, social uh, NGOs, uh, and, and they 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 came to on oh, the and the big tech company in New Zealand, which was Telecom at the time, which was pretty much a monopoly on everything uh, telecoms related. And they came together and they formed the Internet Safety Group that later became NetSafe. And and the uh, original CEO, who deserves a lot of credit for the way that she constructed that, uh, Liz Butterfield, she she then wanted to step aside in two thousand and six. And so I, I saw the job and I thought this is this is the one for me. Um, it was a bit of a, like it was a bit of a change for me to go from the tech industry and the the for profit industry into the not for profit industry. It probably took me a few years to work out how to balance kind of things slightly differently in that space. But uh, when I was with NetSafe, it just, it was one thing to another. So, uh, you know, we started out and, uh, you know, we would little small NGO making less than a million dollars a year, um, spending less than a million dollars a year when you're an NGO, you make and spend the same amount, don't you? Uh, and um, so, so we were doing that. We weren't, uh, we didn't have, you know any particular powers or responsibilities or anything we were just doing what we could uh, and then you know we took on a job to to uh, host the the cyber crime reporting portal for the country in about uh, 2010 uh, so i've been there i started in 2006 i've been there four years we, we set up this portal you could report into it we triaged out the reports to the various agencies we learned quite a lot from that and that then led to the the um 
harmful digital communications act responsibilities that came later in the the scaling up of NetSafe. And so when I left NetSafe in 2021, uh, you know, it's a was a $5 million, approximately the same $5 million a year entity, which, you know, New Zealand's a population of 5 million people. So that's give you a sort of scale uh, uh, of what it's worth in the kind of scale of things here in New Zealand. Uh, so $5 million entity responsibilities to deliver contracts to two government agencies or for to the public on behalf of two government agencies, uh, you know, plus uh, the responsibilities and sort of things that uh, that led to us meeting, you know, going and serving on uh, advisory councils and and, uh, and doing that kind of international responsibility as well. Quite the journey. Two thoughts coming into my mind. I think there is a book and there is a Netflix series which should be written about, from your perspective, about online safety in New Zealand. And ladies and gentlemen, watching this, this is like, some, and that's why I went back to your school because, there is a lot of online safety history, which you have been a part of, which is very important to understand, to see where do we go from here. It is not a new beginning. You know, pe people have been involved with online safety for almost two decades right now, uh, people like yourself. And I want to bring that history into this conversation because my next question is about 2024. And I put into context what happened in the beginning of the year, which was Last day of January, we see this hearing in the United States. We see the Digital Services Act in UK. We see the DPDP Act in India and multiple uh, online safety driving legislation, generative AI, and kind of the world waking up from COVID and realizing, okay, unlimited uh, screen time and just being on the internet cannot happen without guardrails. And it's not just you and me or people from the activism space uh, or NGO space talking about it. It's also industry leaders who are now very, very seriously talking about it. And the conversation has grown. Many leaders like yourself and from across the globe. So uh, sitting here in, in, the, in the middle of March, how do you, you look at 2024, this year of Gen AI coming in, people talking about it? Yeah, I mean, I think the easiest answer is the one that you hear from most people. 2024 is the year of uh, generative AI disrupting elections. So at the end of the year, we're going to be looking back at uh, uh, just like 40 uh, democratic elections around the world. It could be more, get the number wrong. Uh, and, you know, we're already starting to see how people are using AI to push messaging uh, and sort of confuse the voter landscape. So there's no question that AI is going to affect the elections. That's not to say it's going to affect the outcome. So, so uh, you know, we may still end up with the same party voted in that would have been without the disruption. But there is a very good possibility, I think, that we will see uh, out outcomes from elections. That is, you know, you can you can put it l some of the responsibility for the outcome of the election down to AI and the misuse of AI to 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 you know mislead voters. So I think. 2024, at the end of this year, we are sitting, we're going to be looking at that and we're going to be saying, yeah, that that that, that did definitely happen. It's just it's too too obvious to sort of a crossover. For somebody who works in online safety, you know, uh, broadly, like, like we do, the issue is that everybody's talking about AI and everybody's talking about elections. When you talk about that congressional hearing, that was uh, that was really about, you know, child protection online, which is typically been the topic that uh you know will get airtime no matter what else is going on but even that's starting to get squeezed to the side and, and discussions about you know just the day-to-day -day troubles of being online the kind of bullying the harassment the, the 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 misuse of technology just to disrupt other people's lives it's getting pushed further and further from the from the mainstream uh, efforts to to work on it. So I think 2024 is also going to be a year of, uh, unfortunately, of other issues getting um, pushed to the back of the queue a bit. And, you know, it's up to people like us, I guess, people who work in the space, especially to keep kind of <laughs> raising those issues and say, D don't forget, these these are affecting people's lives online too. So, so we've got to keep working on that. You talked about regulation. I think your, your 2023 was a year of regulation. I mean, certainly even stuff that's come into place this year, you know, the debate about it, it was in 2023, we saw just an extraordinary number of uh, regulatory efforts around the world. I, look, I'm not a regulator, and every time I dive deeply into conversations about regulation and policy, uh, you know, my my inbox will be full of people saying, look, you really don't, really don't, this is not your space, Martin, stay out of it. But the, the, but, but, but one thing I would say is that we haven't seen any of the impact of this regulation yet. So, 
we're all talking about how good the DSA is. We're we're all talking about the work that's going on in Australia and this in this part of the world being led by the um, e safety commission. What we don't know, we we know it's good regulation. We know it's implementable regulation. But what we don't know is how much it's changing people's lives online. Is is there actually going to be a reduction in bullying and harassment? Is there going to be a reduction in scams and fraud? You know, is there going to be a reduction in stalking and that kind of behaviour? I don't know that that regulation is going to do that yet. What the regulation has done is it's given the regulators power, which they can now use. So so that's great. Uh, but how much that power changes the actual dynamic for people uh, online, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm hopeful. I don't want, to, don't want to sound like I'm saying regulation doesn't work. You have to have regulation. Regulation shapes everything. If you get the regulation right. Every agency knows how to work around it to, cre to create an out outcome. So regulation is really important. And the, I think the regulation that we've seen, especially that has been in Europe, you know, using kind of flexible approaches, giving the regulators the ability to kind of apply a, a, a set of powers, but not locking them into very definitive kind of uh, actions and, and um and responsibilities, I think that can work. And it certainly can work when you've got the right person in, in the space. And so here in this part of the world, Australia is the big mover. You know, you've got a, a great e-safety commissioner at the moment, you know, hugely experienced, comes from the industry, worked in online safety for a long time, you know, really applying those powers. And so, you know, I think there's a, there's a model there that I think really can work, but it has to be proven. So, that's what's happening at the moment. Definitely exciting times. And I, I totally hear you on uh, what is the impact going to be uh, on the people using it at the end of the day. Uh, no matter what I do, build AI, start up this and that, I come from the ground. I work for the people. So that has always been my interest. Uh, and in the spirit of solution, and, and there is a solution right in the background, your baby, I'm a big fan of it, I see. I see that as definitely a very, very important part. So talk to us about uh, online safety exchange. Uh, what's happening there? What is it all about? And uh, where are we going with that? Yeah, well, I think online safety exchange is, is born directly from my experience, having run NetSafe for 15 years. Uh, one of the issues that we face in in the field of online safety is that we we, we haven't really focused a lot on the practice and profession of online safety. So when I left NetSafe, what I thought was what I could do is I could create an entity that uh, it sort of had two missions. One is to kind of uh, promote and uh, progress um, the practice and professionalism of online safety. So, you know, we we, we put out a, a newsletter about kind of big things that are happening around the world, we try to... Uh, Run, you know, had some podcasts with people who are experts, you know, talk to other experts, contribute to the conversation. And all of this is really just to try to advance what it, the online safety so that it becomes more of an actual practice and, and profession. And then as part of that, and I guess kind of the second mission is to just host a community of, of like minded people, uh, other people who are, you know, just, I, I mean, it feels like you're swimming against the tide all the time. You know, all this trouble coming from the internet, there's a few of us, but th there's actually a lot of us, but we're just separated. Uh, and if we can kind of form together a bit more and just share ideas, share resources from time to time, work on projects jointly, that's, that's you know, that's my big dream. Because a lot of things that we do, yes, they need customizing to be used locally. So, so you can't just create something and just apply it to the world. It doesn't work. But you can create the base of a tool. And then apply that or use a local partner to customize it and apply it like so I, I feel like we could do some things together um and that, you know some sort of obvious things around uh you know better systems for schools and tools for schools and things like that and they, they actually could be used pretty uh widely around the world so that's what the online safety is about it's not i mean it's not aimed at end users i don't I, we don't produce content and material for end users there's no reason why people can't read it i mean it's all public we put it out People are, are are really interested in online safety, but really it's a it's a community and a and a and a business and operation. It's actually a not for profit, so I should be clear: it is a not for profit, uh, but it is it is serving the online safety community. We're trying to serve the online safety community, and anybody who works in the space, anybody who works in online safety, can can join us. You know, we've got they can subscribe to the newsletter, uh, they can join into the community that we've uh, that we just started and launched, and and. Um, got a few a few friends in there already a few people in there already which is exciting uh and then you know we'll start to launch some joint projects and and see where we can take it 
I mean, look, the big thing in, in the space is that I wanted to do something that other people weren't doing. Uh, and I feel like the online safety exchange is different from other online safety agencies and it can work with them rather than against them because I I have a, a personal pet hate <laughs> of NGOs especially, but anybody working in the space competing with each other and, and cutting each other down, which, uh, you know, is is just just contrary to what we're actually here to achieve so uh you know i'm not i'm not saying it's a constant problem for me but i just anybody who wants to work together they're, they're welcome to join i i think uh, there will be no solution unless we collaborate and not just within ngos unless we collaborate with the people creating platforms and the people creating the laws as well i think the easiest way to divert the movement is by pointing one of them as the villain be it the NGO is the villain or the government is the villain or the tech industry. The truth of the matter at the end of the day is if we don't collaborate, uh, yeah, we, we, we put our forces against each other. Uh, I think uh, one part that I would really like to, uh, you know, uh, uh, highlight and, 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 and come back to is uh, I've had the privilege of, uh, you know, uh, uh, knowing you and, and, and working with you. But let's say uh, people who actually view our podcast, they are... Um, civil society organizations um, across India, across United States, UK, and a few in Australia. So uh, they are the people and also startups. So uh, they, they can join you on the website. It's a very easy process. Uh, but but let's let's look into specifics. Like let's look into, you know, uh, uh, startups. If, if they would like to uh, gain from you or if civil society would really like to collaborate with you, do you have some thoughts? For 2024, that this is what we are doing, guys, and this is what we can do together. Something specific we can dive into. Uh, yeah, I mean, we do <laughs> do have a series of projects. Uh, like any non for profit, you sort of have a suite of projects, and you know, you apply to to funders to try to get support for them, and just kind of push them forward until they get get enough momentum. Uh, you know, we're definitely interested. I'm definitely interested in collaborating on stuff in uh, schools. So we're working on a on a system for schools, which I think is different from the systems that have been built for schools before. When I say system, I mean a, a set of like processes that enable a school to set up a online safety uh, system of its own, a um, program of its own. Uh, and so I've got uh, I've, I've worked on that myself, and I've worked on it with the directors of the Online Safety Exchange to get um, to get it sort of smashed into a good shape. Uh, but it you know it needs now international partners, people to to um, pick it up and pilot it in different countries and sort of test it and, and see whether those assumptions we've made are, are correct. Um, we I mean we'll be producing a bit more content and stuff through the year, so you know absolutely happy to to collaborate on on that kind of thing. Uh, I have a bit of a project that's at early stages, but um, on really helping people select uh, from, because, okay, go back a step. One of the big issues for online safety is it's just content galore, right? So there's content everywhere. And I think that um, if you're the average teacher or parent or HR professional or whatever it is, and you, you're like, I've got this online safety issue I've got to solve, whether it's choosing what device to buy from my kid right through to dealing with some bullying har harassment online between my staff and, you know, whatever, like all of those things. So you Google it and you get like 300 different kind of uh, pieces of advice or hits or brochures or whatever. So I think that there's definitely, there's a, there's a, there's a need for us as professionals in the space to start to, to at least add some criteria on what makes something good. And I ideally really to put our hands up and say, look, this, this is actually the best, this is the best thing. Now it's hard. It's hard if you're producing things to say someone else's content is the best. So it's easy for someone like the exchange, where we're not competing, to say, "Look, we think that right now, you know, the best guide for parents is from FOSI and, and the US." And you know, if it changes and somebody else produces the best guide, then to be say, "Well, that's now the best guide," you know. So I want to sort of explore that as well, and I think that's something that um, we do jointly. I mean, the main thing at the moment for me is anybody who wants to work with the exchange, I want, want to make sure that, you know, because they're all busy, everybody's, everybody's busy, um, that, you know, what they put in, they get more back. So, uh, it's, you know, relatively small investment of time uh, and an opportunity to to get more than that back in time savings and, you know, cost efficiency and so forth. So uh, so that's, that's kind of things that I'm focusing on. And you put me on the spot a little bit actually because I've 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 just suddenly blanked on on my projects. Um, 
So uh, apologies for that. But honestly, if any, if, the other thing is if people have got ideas, you know, reach out. Um, you know, one of the things that I've done for a long time is, you know, turn ideas into actual deliverables. I did that with uh, NetSafe and now doing it with the exchange. Uh, and so, you know, it's a thing that I know a bit about and I'm not saying I know more than everybody else, but I know a bit about it and I know a bit about it in the online safety space. So, uh, so you know, shout out and, and we'll just talk about it and see, see what, uh, what can come of it. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, I mean, uh, one of the ideas, we are working on it a lot. We spoke about Gen AI in the beginning, uh, you know, producing this content and stuff like that. The other side of Gen AI is that it can actually uh, help uh, in, in, the, in, in pushing the safety movement forward, be it like an agent for content moderation, policy creation, uh, multiple things are happening over there. So I, I do see, um, and it's, this is more like wishful thinking, but also... Uh, technology companies and, and startups which are working in this space because the other side of it which is a major gap is by the time you find out who is the best person to solve it for you even for the big tech companies which is the best content moderation uh, uh, you know uh, sorry I have to get the light on which is the best content moderation uh, you know uh, technology which can help you so I also see a space for them where uh, they can support a, a program like this and also push what they have developed, because uh, it goes hand in hand. They need your expertise, and we need to understand them. So that is also another space uh, to maybe look into. Um, I think uh, you know the, the, it's it's a brilliant program, and like I said when we met, and I'll always push for it. Uh, do think about India, and uh, it is literally uh, my last question that you know when do we get to host you here? We are two billion people. A lot of online safety issues and would love to kind of, you know, have the online safety exchange be uh, a global entity and also active in uh, places like India, because a lot of coalitions are coming up in India. Social and media matters is a, is a part of many of them. But uh, yeah, uh, would, would love to host you here. Any thoughts about going international, doing some physical events? Uh, yeah, physical events. So definitely the whole... Uh, uh, ethos of the online safety exchange is to be global. I, I mean, I'm based here in New Zealand and I'm you know, registered in New Zealand, but uh, the work that we're doing is designed to be global and, and, and to work anywhere. Uh, in terms of uh, India specifically, I'm always you know conscious of the fact that whenever people talk about online safety, they talk about safety at scale and anything in India is at scale, isn't it? So um, you know, so I'm fascinated by uh, whenever I talk to to operators out of India, you know, just to understand the kind of experience on the ground and so forth. I mean, I'd 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 love to spend some time there, and uh, you know, I'm hoping that's something that I can do in the in the near future. I, I yeah, I mean, it's it's 100. It, I'd love to, uh, and you know, I'm sure that I will have been there within the next little while. I know we we talked previously or uh, via email about you know. Um, whether you know when India might host a, like a major international kind of event in the space, and you know, I mean, I, I, look, the, the time is right. We, we, you and I go uh, to events, and they're often in in the US, and uh, and you know, it's great for us because we we go there and we understand what they see about the world. You know, so we understand the kind of US centric view. Uh, but there's a whole lot of people around the world who who really have a different view uh, view of things, and I think. Um, you know, India could definitely be a, a sort of a central point for for gathering, you know, kind of the rest of the world, especially and having a conversation about what it means to to do safety when you're not in the US with those big um, majority of those big tech companies. No, I mean, I know there's big tech companies around the world, but those main ones that sort of are the platforms we're always talking about safety on. They're based there in the US. And, and uh, look, I don't. I think the average person probably doesn't doesn't realize just how much that changes the way Americans think about trust and safety issues or about online safety issues. Uh, they just don't see the challenges in the same way we we do, and they don't see the solutions in the same way we do. And that's one of the things that we're constantly there challenging them in terms of their thinking and try and challenge their challenge them to start to sort of see the the, the issues around from the from the perspective of other uh, people and the rest of the world. Definitely, definitely, totally agree on that. So I hope. Uh... Stephen and all our friends in the big tech companies who we regularly meet on uh, events. Uh, let's host something in New Zealand, India, and and, and look into it. All right, I, I think Martin, the, this this was a brilliant conversation and uh, you know a lot of uh, food for thought. And hopefully, you know, it'll get up many many visits to the online safety exchange and new members uh, from across the globe and where people uh, view it. 
and uh, also uh, you know collaborations uh, love the idea of the school system uh, some researches which are coming up i think india is going to elections now so post 2 3 months things will settle in and all our plans will be out and uh, as social and media matters can support online safety exchange will definitely uh, you know uh, promote and share and spread the word in our network so yeah uh, brilliant thank you thank you for your time thank you for all those answers and uh, hope this pushes the envelope a little forward in the online safety space